Hi there, thanks for joining me. In this video, we're going to take a quick look at the Preserve Transparency feature in Corel Painter. Preserve Transparency is a little uh, feature you can turn on. It's located at the top left of your layers palette. And while it's turned on, it works kind of like a stencil to allow you to only paint on the contents of a particular layer. So if you've worked with stencils before, uh, you could kind of put a stencil down and then paint onto it and Hopefully, if you paint uh, over it, then when you move the stencil, what you have is kind of there. Well, you don't have to do it in quite such a complicated way as I've done here. I'll just hide these. There's this Preserve Transparency feature, which essentially does the same thing there. So you have to create a new layer in your Layers palette. And when you first create a new layer, there's nothing on it. So this preserve transparency won't work until you add something to that layer. So on this new layer, I'm just going to add a little red dot here. So now this layer has something on it, this little red dot. Other than that, it's completely empty. So if we turn on preserve transparency, what will happen is it will allow us to only paint inside this area here, this red dot. Since there's nothing else outside of the red dot, nothing will happen when I paint outside. So I'm going to pick a different color, like a green, and I'm going to try to paint outside of this red dot, and nothing is happening. But when I start to paint inside of the red dot, you can see it's kind of confined all of my paint to within that shape. I could pick yellow, and I could paint it yellow. If I turn off Preserve Transparency and I start painting I'm just adding to the layer. So now this layer gets more complicated. And if I turn Preserve Transparency back on, pick a different color and start painting, it's again confined within that shape. So what it's doing is it's kind of forcing your layer to become a stencil for itself. And it allows you to only paint within this. Now, how could this be helpful? Well, if you wanted to do some shading on your layer, you could turn on Preserve Transparency and go ahead and do all your shading without having to worry about painting on any of the layers underneath or above. So it works really, really well for that. You can see you can add some shading to things quite easily. And we can even blend using a blender. So it's preserving the transparency. The transparency is the area that's outside of the layer where there's nothing. Now, again, if you want to add to this layer or modify it, you're going to have to turn off Preserve Transparency. We know that it's on because it's blue, and if we try to do something like distort the edge, uh, we can't push the pixels beyond the edge of this layer. They can go outside of it into this invisible area here, but they don't really, it doesn't really move the edge of the pixels that are on this layer. So that can be a good thing sometimes. Sometimes I'll want to smudge pixels with Preserve Transparency turned on. Sometimes I'll want it off. If I turn it off, this is the effect I get. I'm smudging everything. And you might want that effect too. You might also want to blend the edges with Preserve Transparency. Be careful not to get too close to the edge because you might pull in some white. I can blend. If I turn Preserve Transparency off and I blend near the edge, then I get this effect, which I might not want. So you have to kind of watch out for that. But this is a really handy feature that you can use uh, to kind of make your own stenciling effect and make it easier to do shading and do things more intentionally. Just remember that if you're having, if you've made a new layer and you're having trouble painting, Preserve Transparency might be on. Because if I try it again and I try to paint now on this new layer, with Preserve Transparency on, nothing's happening. I have to turn it off, then I can paint. Then if I want to, I can turn it back on, and I can stencil off my shape there. So I have a whole bunch of other videos that use this technique to create paintings that you can watch to get a feel for how you can use this to create artwork. If you found this information helpful, Take a quick second to like this video or share it on YouTube, and that'll make it easier for other artists out there to find this information. And also take a quick second to check me out on Facebook. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned for my next video.